I want to welcome everybody again tonight. I'm Jamal Corner. I'm going to be facilitating tonight's information session. If you require Spanish translations for the session, uh, again, those will uh, be provided in audio tonight. Uh, we'll also be leaving instructions in our chat, a uh, link in our chat that will allow you to click and follow along in Spanish. Also want to remind our speakers to speak a little slowly tonight as we are translating this simultaneously. Joining us tonight, we have our board member, Dr. Alma Castro, our superintendent, Dr. Gudio Crossway, associate superintendent of education services, Dr. Shauna Dinkins, chief business officer, Gregory Fromm, and assistant superintendent of human resources, Dr. Brian Lucas. At this time, I'm going to invite Dr. Castro to say a few words. Dr. Castro. Buenas noches, good evening, Linwood families and community. I would like to thank you for participating in tonight's information meeting. I recognize that this is a complex issue that will impact all of our lives. And so it is important that we begin the conversation today about these impacts to you, to your family and to our students. Tonight, you will hear more about the steps we are taking to remedy the high school construction issue and how we plan to accommodate our students. I would like to reassure you that the Board of Education is committed to resolving the issues at Linwood High School quickly and responsibly, holding accountable those responsible. I would like to thank our community for your steadfast support as we navigate these issues together. Again, I invite you to continue to participate in information meetings and share your concerns. Gracias por su participación en esta reunión informativa y los invito a que continúen participando en estas reuniones y que compartan sus inquietudes. Gracias y buenas noches. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank you for that. At this time, I'm going to introduce our superintendent, Dr. Christwaite who will be telling us more about tonight's information session. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Corner, and good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you, uh, board member Dr. Castro, for joining us tonight. Thank you for your support and your leadership for the Linwood community. I wanna just remind everyone once again, before we start the presentation, that if you click on the chat, you can find the presentation in Spanish as well. So you can follow along in English and in Spanish. And we also have the translation available in Spanish. Should we go over the translation once more, Mr. Corner? Sure, let's do that. Uh, Claudia, would you like to mention our translation instructions? Sure. Un recordatorio que la sesión se está transmitiendo en inglés y en español. Siga las instrucciones en la pantalla para escuchar la presentación en español. En el fondo de su pantalla, haga clic en interpretación para las opciones de audio. Y por favor, diríjase al foro de chat para nuestro enlace a la presentación de esta noche. Thank you, Claudia. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Claudia, again. So once again, good evening, everyone. And again, thank you for attending tonight's session. First and foremost, I hope that you, your family, and all your loved ones are all doing well. As Dr. Castro said, I know there might be a lot of questions, and we will do our best to answer as many as we can tonight. But we will also have, <clears throat> excuse me, multiple opportunities for you to share your concerns and direct your questions to us. Today, we will provide you with the summary of the issues we are facing and our current instructional plans for next year. And at the end of this meeting, we will have a question and answer session. So you don't have to wait until the end to submit your questions. Please, as they become available, uh, enter your questions into the chat. While we know that this situation is not ideal, we are making these plans with student safety as our focus. And we plan to make these shifts as seamless as possible. As a school district, 
we cannot compromise on student safety. Now we'll provide some background on the timeline of events that has led to the realignment plans. The plans for the instructional shifts were sparked by the discovery of structural issues at Linwood High School following the unexpected failure of exterior roofing panels, also known as soffits. Linwood Unified launched an immediate review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. <clears throat> Linwood Unified families were also provided high level information that there had been a structural issue that we were looking into. Our school board immediately scheduled an emergency board meeting to address the situation in June. We quickly launched a review to determine the extent of the issues on campus and the repairs needed. Additionally, we have worked closely with the California Division of State Architects, also known as DSA, to address these concerns. Once again, once the soffits were identified as concerning, our board quickly acted again to hire a firm and in an overabundance of caution to remove the ceiling soffits. As you can see on this timeline, numerous meetings took place and ultimately, Linwood Unified hired an independent structural engineer to help us assess the safety of the building while investigating the cause of the collapse. On July 23rd, our school board made an agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of the plaster soffits at Linwood High School and an agreement with Delterra to provide emergency project oversight of the soffits. Then on September 10th, our school board approved an emergency resolution to remove all soffits at Linwood High School. Then in Oct on October 8th, our school board approved agreements with contractors for the emergency removal of the soffits. The following month on November 8th, our school board held another special meeting and study session, followed by a November 12th meeting where our school board approved an agreement with the engineering firm to assess the condition of various overhead items on the Linwood High School campus. For a little more background information on the October 8th meeting, the Board of Education entered into service agreements with AP Construction and Fast Track Construction. Then on November 12th, the district made a structural engineering service agreement with Petra Structural Engineers to assess the condition of various overhead items at Linwood High School. <clears throat> on December 10th, we entered into an agreement with TIR Incorporated to provide assessment services in conjunction with the emergency plaster soffit removal at Linwood High School. Then on Sunday, January 24th, our school board held another special meeting to, to review and update on the Linwood High School facilities and propose instructional shifts for the 21-22 school year. At this meeting, our school board emphasized that this process must be very public and very transparent with all decisions putting student and staff safety first. The following day on Monday, we met with our school principals to inform them of these shifts we met with the staff at Linwood High School and we met with the staff at Linwood Middle School. The following day, we notified families that the structural concerns were serious and that plans were in development to physically move instruction off Linwood High School's campus while the investigation continues and repairs are made. Our district is planning to move all Linwood High School student instruction to another campus for the 21-22 school year which will impact middle and elementary school students as well. <clears throat> Please note the following dates of the information that we've already held, as well as their respective topics. Each information session has been recorded and is available on our district website in English and in Spanish. Throughout this transition, we will provide regular updates to, to you, to our community, sharing new information as it becomes available through a variety of platforms, including our website, phone blasts, 
information sessions like this, as well as our social media. Our district will also be gathering feedback through a digital survey that will be sent to Linwood Unified Families this month. As always, I want to personally thank you for your steadfast support of Linwood Unified as we continue working to create the strongest learning environments and strive to ensure success for all of our students. Please note that at the end of this session, we will respond to any questions that you post on the Zoom chat. So please continue submitting your questions. Don't wait to the end. You may submit your questions in English or in Spanish. And, um, and, and that concludes my part of the presentation, Mr. Corner. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. I think I'm gonna go over the uh, translation instructions one more time, just in case we have a couple uh, new people who have joined the information session since we started. Um, if you wanna turn your attention here to the uh, screen, we do have audio translation available. Uh, in our chat, we also have a link um, that takes you to the presentation in Spanish that allows you to follow along. Um, and if you don't mind, Claudia, providing those instructions once more in Spanish. La presentación se está transmitiendo en inglés y en español. Para ver las opciones de interpretación, por favor, vea hacia el fondo de su pantalla y haga clic en interpretación para las opciones de audio. También, por favor, diríjase al foro de chat para el enlace de nuestra presentación en español. All right, thank you for that. At this time, I'm gonna introduce Greg Fromm. Uh, he's gonna be providing us more detail on the construction issues. Mr. Fromm. Thank you, Jamal. We will now take a look at the affected buildings. The G building, a central multi-story facility where the classrooms are located, has been closed for use since June of 2020. Out of an abundance of caution, the district had the engineering firm assess all buildings on campus. To a lesser extent, there are structural concerns at other LHS buildings. Once the investigation is complete and repairs are identified, a timeline will be set and shared with the community. At this time, we believe the repairs to the lesser affected facilities could be completed before the start of the 21-22 school year. At this time, we do not have information on the cost of the repairs or remedies to LHS campus, but the district will share these details once they are known. The district will aggressively pursue remuneration from anyone deemed responsible for construction flaws, as well as matching funds from available state facility dollars. As you are aware, the Linwood Unified Community has supported bond measures for facility improvements in recent years. In 2012, the community supported Measure K, a $93 million bond, which so far has funded over $52.7 million in repairs and upgrades at our school sites. The community also supported the $65 million Measure N in November of 2016. This measure has funded over $15.3 million in projects to date. In January of 2020, the district issued $25 million in bonds for repair and, upgraded and upgrade projects across the community. It's important to note the community's approval of Measure K and N, including guidance on how those bond funds were to be used with a focus on specific facilities and repairs needed across the district. Funds from past bonds have been spent or are currently committed to projects across the district. Here's a list of a few completed and pending projects at sites throughout the district. Now I'll throw it back to Jamal. All right, thank you, Mr. Fromm. Just wanna give a, a friendly reminder to all of our speakers to speak a little slowly tonight for the benefit of our simultaneous uh, Spanish translation. Also wanna remind the audience to continue putting your questions in the chat. Um, there is also a question and answer, uh, excuse me, a question and answer function uh, that you may use. Um, I see a couple questions already, so we'll 
We'll get to those at the very end. At this time, I'm gonna introduce Dr. Shauna Dinkins. Uh, she's gonna highlight the district's current plans for realignment. Dr. Dinkins. Good evening. Thank you all for being with us this evening. Now that we've provided background on the construction issues, we will outline the instructional shifts for next year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Linwood High School students will attend the Linwood Middle School campus, which formerly housed Linwood High School. Current fifth graders will remain at their elementary schools next year for sixth grade. Cesar Chavez and Hostler Middle Schools will have grades seven and eight with most Linwood Middle School students attending Hostler. These adjustments are planned for the 21-22 school year, but may be extended as needed based on the extent of the construction at Linwood High School. Here we have a map that outlines the feeder patterns detailing where elementary students will promote for middle school. Currently, we have 10 Linwood Unified Elementary Schools that teach up to sixth grade. Next year, Lincoln and Marshall students entering sixth grade will remain on their elementary school campuses. This is a result of the anticipated space constraints at the middle schools, which are caused by the need to move Linwood High School students off their campus and onto the LMS site. In 21-22, Teaching staff will be augmented at Lincoln and Marshall to accommodate the addition of sixth graders. Additionally, the district is committed to providing our sixth graders on these campuses with rigorous curriculum appropriate for their grade level. We also believe this shift can also benefit the students because it can provide continuity of instruction and additional support for young students Displaced for, the displaced for the last school year by the COVID-19 pandemic. More details about the shift and how it pertains to our elementary students will be shared as they become available. I'll now turn this back over to Jamal. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. Also just wanna thank our audience tonight for joining us and uh, listening to our presentation. Uh, please know that while many of these details are pending, our focus will remain on doing what's best for our students and families. Uh, we'll continue to provide regular and transparent updates with our community as new information becomes available. And of course, we'll do that on our school websites uh, as well as our, our district website. At this time, we're gonna share some of the questions you submitted uh, for our question and answer session. We'll answer those to the best of our ability. Before we begin, I just want to remind you that if you have a complex or personal question, you may email those to meetingquestions at mylusd.org, and we'll get back to you with a direct and private response. For those who might be watching this session at a later date, we also encourage you to use the email uh, so that we can respond to you. And then lastly, uh, tonight, if for whatever reason we miss your question, uh, please also use the email uh, just to ensure that we get you the answers you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the chat here. Um, also just wanna make an announcement that the chat is open. Uh, at any point, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to send those in. Uh, I actually have a comment first. Uh, just thank you very much for everything you are doing very well. I thank you for your work and patient towards students and parents. I congratulate them, thanks. Thank you very much for that. We, we appreciate your patience and understanding during this transition as well. Um, let's see here. Does this apply to the incoming sixth graders? Can you please clarify? Dr. Dinkins, if you wanted to provide some clarity. So um, if you currently have a student who's going to be a sixth grader, um, it mainly affects those fifth graders who are at Lincoln and Marshall. So if your kid is currently a sixth grader, but moving on to middle school, yes, you will be affected. Um, I can give you what the school is, not really sure what school your child attends, but I can name off um, the feeder pattern for you. Um, if your child attends Abbott, Keller, Lindbergh, Twain, 
Rosa Parks or Wilson, your school will be Hostler for next year. If your child attends Lugo, Roosevelt, Washington, or Will Rogers, um, or, or will not Lincoln and Marshall because they're staying, but if it's Lugo, Roosevelt, Washington, Will Rogers, or Marshall, your child will be assigned to CCMS. If you wish to change that, um, if you go on our website, there is a link to request a transfer to your desired school. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. A uh, question came in just as you were answering. Uh, so that if my daughter goes to Helen Keller, where would she go for seventh grade? Hostler, Hostler Middle School. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I also see a couple of our attendees have raised their hands. Um, just want to remind you, if you have a question, uh, we'll facilitate all those and answer all those uh, in our chat or in our question uh, and answer uh, format here. Maybe we should, I'm going to have uh, the Spanish um, repeated one last time just to ensure that everybody is getting that information. Claudia, would you mind repeating this once more? Sure. Un recordatorio que para, uh, por favor, puede seguir las instrucciones en la pantalla para ver y es para escuchar la presentación en español. Y hacia el fondo de su pantalla, por favor, haga clic en interpretación para las opciones de audio. Por favor, fíjase al foro de chat para el enlace de nuestra presentación en español. Okay, thank you so much for that. Our next question, how long will the re repairs last at LHS? Mr. Fromm, would you like to field this question? Yes, once the investigation is complete and we know what need, needs to be repaired, then, then we will have a timeline to set and share with the community. All right, thank you for that. We have a question here. What about Hostler students in Wilson Elementary? Dr. Dinky said you want to touch on our, our schools? Yes, uh, Wilson Elementary by feeder pattern would feed into Hostler. Um, again, if you request a change or would like a change, um, you may go on our district website and there is a link to request that change to CCMS if that's desired. I, we realize that some families may live closer to one school than the other, and we will accommodate those requests based on space. Thank you for that. Uh, we have a question from a parent that is a popular one. Uh, currently, my son attends LMS. He's a seventh grader. Once they return to school, can we select the middle school they will attend? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this? So yes, currently we have most of our Linwood Middle School students, um, current seventh graders and incoming um, seventh graders uh, assigned to Hostler. If you wish to change that, you can make a request on our website. There's a link and you can request a transfer to CCMS. Thank you, Dr. Dinkins. Another very popular question. When will we be returning to in-person instruction? Dr. Crossway, would you like to field this question? Sure, thank you, Mr. Poner. This is one of those questions that just changes from, the answer changes from week to week. And just yesterday, LA County Department of Public Health, as well as the LA County Office of Education announced that the positivity rate has now gone down so much that elementary schools can now start moving forward to provide in-person support for students. And so even though that has been the, the rates, there are still other factors that need to be considered, including <clears throat> families, right? So we wanna know from you as families, how many of you are interested in bringing back your children out of necessity for childcare reasons or any other reasons? So we will be sending out another survey to you to make sure that we gather that information. 
We have been providing in-person support in small groups, tutoring, and childcare, but we put that on hold in December and January. And with the rates being the way they are now, we wanna be able to bring those services back. And then the other part is we also wanna continue the conversations with our teachers, our staff, to make sure that they're ready to come back because there's other factors that we also have to uh, keep in mind as we start bringing students back. And ultimately is we wanna bring students back when it's safe to do so, not only for our students, but also for our staff. So again, look out for the survey. Let us know if this is something that you need so that we can start moving forward and, and uh, supporting these efforts. And, and with that, is also know that for the summer, we are planning on increasing our capacity of providing support for students. And we're hoping that we'll have in-person options, a hybrid option, as well as a remote or distance learning option as well. And, um, you know, so right now I don't have a definite answer, but we're getting closer and I'm more and more optimistic that we'll be able to continue providing more in-person support for our students. Thank you, Dr. Crossway. Just also want to remind everybody that we also have our email address here, meeting questions at mylusd.org. Um, a, qu a question may occur to you well after this session uh, that you may want to ask, so feel free to email us at any point and we will respond to you. Um, our next question here, would my son that goes to Fireball be affected? So would a, a current Fireball student uh, be affected by this? Dr. Dinkins? Um, no, um, students at Fireball or assigned to go to Fireball are good. Um, unless you want a transfer. But if your child is currently attending Fireball, they are, they're not affected by the transition. And speaking of transfers, how long will the transfer take? And when can we start the application? Um, so the transfers are, are available immediately. They're being processed as they come in. And so we don't have a time limit on the application, but if you already know which school you desire, uh, please access the link on the website, put your information in, and then in, internally, we will make those changes. And then in the next uh, 10 to 12 days, um, we're trying to get our in, um, registration and enrollment packets out a little sooner due to this transition. So you should be receiving that as well. Thank you. Uh, my daughter is attending sixth grade at Washington now. For the following year, will Cesar Chavez have to do it? Do I need to do some paperwork or will the school take care of it for her? So if you're a student, I'm sorry, Jamal, was that question for me? <laughs> It was. I jumped the gun, I'm sorry. If your student currently attends Washington, um, their next school for middle school is CCMS. And so internally, um, they will be rolled over automatically. But of course, there's still a registration process that we typically do registration and orientation in the summer. But this year, because of transition, we're trying to get that done a little sooner. So we'll make those announcements as soon as those registration packets are ready to go. Thank you for that. And I do still see that we have a few uh, hands raised. So just want to uh, remind you for those of you who have, who have raised your hands to speak, um, if you would put, direct those questions to our chat here, um, we will gladly answer them for you. I uh, see another question here. It's more of a comment, in my opinion, to maximize or minimize rather COVID exposure, two to three days of in-person would be good. One group can go two days and the other group another three days in the following week, switch the groups. Dr. Crossway or Dr. Dinkins, would you like to, to speak to our uh, hybrid? Yeah, plan? yeah. Uh, and if it's okay, Jamal, maybe I can take the second question from uh, Bernabe. Bernabe. Sure. So when we, when we talk about bringing students back in person, you're not gonna have a classroom 
we have 24 or 30 students right now. That's not going to happen for a long time. And, and I don't mean to chuckle because it's, it's serious. In order for us to follow the safety protocols, we have to have less students in a classroom at a time. And so right now, the number for many of our classes will be about 12 students. So for parents who choose to send their students back for in-person support through a hybrid model, we're looking at about 12 students per classroom. It might be less. And in some cases, maybe for PE, for example, at, at the secondary in, in the future, it, it might be a little larger because they'll be outside. But for students who will be inside, the numbers are going to, to be less. And so the safety protocols in, in Linwood are gonna be the same across the county. All students and adults must wear masks at all times. We're going to have reduced number of students in classrooms in order to maintain the physical recommended six feet of distancing. We're, we're, all the water faucets are turned off. So we're gonna have handless water dispensers where students will be able to bring in their own canteens, for example, to fill up. And we're gonna have the disinfecting stations inside the classrooms, as well as outside in the hallways. And even things like breaks, they won't all be able to go out to recess or to the restroom at the same time. They're going to have structured breaks to minimize the interaction. So Martha's recommendation about, you know, having kids come in a, a few days a week, that's exactly how it's going to be. It's going to be some students coming in two or three days a week, maybe not even the full day. And then another group of students coming in another week or another couple of days to minimize the number of students who are coming in person. And so um, for that second question, how will we maintain the social distancing? We are all our classrooms already right now, they're already spread out. We took out the desk. They don't have the same amount of desk inside the classrooms. We have the social markers out in, in outside areas or common areas. And so that's how we're going to, and so again, if, if I'm teaching a third grade class, I'm not gonna have 24 students in the class. It's gonna be about 12 students at a time. And that's how we'll be able to maintain the social distancing. So I hope that helps. And, and right now, the county has only allowed schools to reopen for the elementary grades, not middle school, not high school. However, we still wanna continue providing support in-person support for students at the middle school and at the high school, um, but we're reduced to 20, no more than 25% of students at a time. Thank you. All right, thank you, Dr. Crossweight. And I see a few questions have popped in, so thank you all for using our chat here. My daughter is attending Lugo Elementary School and she is in special education, but her home school is Helen Keller. How do I know which school she is going to be transferred to? So thank you. So right now um, we had that question this morning. And so when we go by feeder, we're using the school that the child is currently attending. So Lugo will go to CCMS. However, if you wish to attend Hostler, um, we can, you can go on the website and access our Google link to request that transfer. But if she's at Lugo, she'll be assigned to CCMS um, with the feeder pattern. Thank you. We have a question that just came into our meeting questions email address. So thank you for using that. Um, my son is in sixth grade at Helen Keller. He is going to Hostler. I wanna know if they will send the applications by regular mail or do we have to pick them up? How will they enroll new students? So our plan right now is to have it electronically and also sent via email. If neither of those options work for you, we can also um, come in person or we can mail them to your home. We will not put any barriers in the way, multiple ways. Thank you. And we have a question about special education at LHS. Um, where will those students be transferred and how will it be for them? 
Um, our special needs students who currently attend Linwood High School, did I hear that correctly? Correct. LHS? Yes, yes um, there will be no, there would not be a transition for them other than the transition to the LMS campuses. They will have all their services, same classes, just on a different uh, campus. I hope that answers the question. Thank you for that. Can we do a walkthrough when our kids return to make sure they are cleaning appropriately? Dr. Crossway, would you like to address? Sure. So the, the quick and easy answer is yes. And, and we want you as a parent, as a community member to feel safe and comfortable when you drop off your child. Um, we have been conducting walkthroughs. And so if you are interested in and joining one on, on one at your site, just reach out to your school principal. We only ask that they have small groups, again, just to maintain the physical distancing, but absolutely, yes. All right, thank you for that. Will teachers be vaccinated before they return to school? Dr. Crossway? We are strongly recommending all of our adults, all of our staff, to be vaccinated. Um, at this time, we're not mandating nor requiring our employees to be vaccinated. We also know that for some people, they may have some other health issues which may prevent them from being vaccinated. I am not a medical expert, but I know I personally will take advantage of the vaccine and we are encouraging our staff to also do the same. And, and if I just may add, we get a, the question about the vaccine a lot for students. Will students be required? So I wanna clarify that currently there is no vaccine for anyone under 16. Vaccines are only available for 16 and up. We are hearing from the CDC that a vaccine for people under 16 may be available in the fall sometime. But for right now, it's not available there is no mandated requirement for students to become vaccinated. All right, thank you for that. Um, I also wanna note, uh, just Mr. Rodas, I know he's uh, raised his hand a few times. So I just wanted to uh, signal, we'd love to take your question if you wouldn't mind sending it in our chat. Thank you so much for that. Um, when do registrations start for Hostler and which link do I use to register? Dr. Dinkins. So right now, um, all of the admin from LMS, Hostler and CCMS are working to get those classes scheduled. So um, give it about two more weeks when they have all the classes and electives um, plugged in and then you should receive announcement either by, via email um, letter from the principal um, giving you the information of when registration will start. Thank you for that. And Mr. Rodas has said we have answered the questions for him. So thank you for letting us know. Um, once more, I want to direct you to our email for any of you that have uh, later questions that you'd like answered. And that's meeting questions at mylusd.org and we'll send you a private and direct response. I'll wait a moment here to see if anyone else has anything they'd want to ask here in the chat. Here we have a question here. Will there be testing for staff uh, for COVID regularly once school returns back to in-person? Uh, Dr. Lucas, would you like to field this question? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, the short answer is yes, there will be. We are working right now with a laboratory that's here in Southern California that will help us administer uh, periodic tests to our employees. Thank you for that. And just also want to remind everybody that all of these information sessions have been recorded uh, and are posted, and this one will be posted uh, on our district website at mylusd.org, and those are in, available in both English and Spanish um, if you'd like to review them. 
I have a question here. Uh, where do I look up electives for Hostler? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to field this? Hi, we, we just completed a web page for all of our middle schools detailing all of the electives and that will go live in the next day or two. We um, uploaded all of CCMS's electives today and Hostler and LMS's electives are already in there for the transition. Um, so look for that via social media in the next few days. It will be a link. You can go on and see which programs are located where. All right, thank you for that. And I do not see any more questions. So I want to thank everybody, of course, for your questions. And we look forward to uh, continuing to answer them uh, via email. Um, I think I spoke too soon. Here comes one. <laughs> uh, when elementary schools open, will online learning still be available? Or will it be OK if we don't want to send our students back to school? Dr. Dinkins, would you like to address that? Yes. Um, though we um, are making plans to come back in person, a virtual option will always be an option for our families. Um, we have the virtual academy right now, um, should you choose to switch over. But once school starts back and you opt to stay um, online, that will be available to you. And by the end of this week, you should be receiving a survey from your school, your current school principal regarding your options um, for when school reopens. Okay, thank you for that. And I wanna thank everyone once again for all your great questions tonight. Um, I think I'm gonna send it back to Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Mr. Corner, and thank you again for joining us tonight. Now, before I, I close up the meeting, Dr. Castro, would you like to make some closing remarks? Thank you, Superintendent Dr. Crossweed. Thank you, families and community, for attending tonight's information meeting and for sharing your questions and concerns. Student and staff safety is our priority, and as we together navigate these difficult changes, we will continue ongoing communication, keeping you informed of our plan and listening to your concerns. These meetings and the concerns you share will help us resolve this issue quickly and responsibly and continue to offer a high quality education for your son and daughter. We will continue to utilize the various platforms to share information as it becomes available to us Meanwhile, please feel free to reach out to our district if you have any additional questions or concerns. Please continue to stay safe and keep others around you safe. And again, thank you and have a good evening. Gracias por su participación y que pase buenas noches. Dr. Crossway. Thank you, Dr. Castro. And uh, thank you again for your leadership and for your availability to spend some time with us tonight. So. I just want to again thank everyone for joining us. I want to thank our, our administrators, our cabinet. I want to thank Jamal Corner for facilitating our translator, Elizabeth Orozco, for doing a fantastic job. And, and thank each and every single one of you again for joining us. You're going to walk away from tonight's meeting and you're going to have more questions, and that's perfectly normal. So, again, meeting questions at my LUSD. Go talk to your principals. They're all here to help. Reach out to us. Any additional questions or concerns, we want to hear from you. But also just keep in mind that we're going to have this survey going out regarding the reopening of schools, but also any questions that you may have or concerns regarding the movement of students from Linwood High School to Linwood Middle School. Like I said from the very beginning, we want this transition to be as seamless as possible for every single one of you. And, and with that, again, thank you. Please continue taking care of yourself. Wear your face mask. Don't congregate with people who are not from your own household. And keep your physical distancing. And thank you for everything you do for our families and the community and for each other. Have a good night. Buenas noches. That concludes our meeting. Thank you for joining us.